Hey, Bernard. Hey, Carsten. So in this video, we talked in the previous ones about the uh, the the routing, right? Uh, now yeah. it's switching time. So <laughs> let me do a recap um, of one note, right? So that's the picture we 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 developed, right? So we talked about the individual node, the networks are the from the physical port and uh, to the virtual adapters that we have created. But as you see, there are a lot of physical ports below, all right? And these ones need to be connected because we have a lot of servers. So let's switch over to the switches. Yeah, this <laughs> this is one of my artwork, I would say. Uh, so I do this light. So you you spoke about the physical nicks that, that are the Phoenix, and uh, mm -hmm. as we saw in our cluster, we have all these Phoenix, these virtual nicks. Uh, but the Phoenix have to be connected to to physical switches, mm -hmm. and this is uh, uh, now now we do some connections. So. Uh, Please press the first, click the first time. <laughs> this is the BMC adapter, the BMC mm -hmm. adapter of the host. We use the BMC for the installing uh, yep. to connect to the uh, bare metal controller where we have different possibilities, e also a remote uh, console. Mm -hmm. This is okay. obviously connected to our one gigabit switches because it's the one gigabit uh, AG45 port. But mm -hmm. this is not important for our cluster, it's just that we can connect to the uh, nodes. So then we have to connect our management switch. And uh, because we want it redundant, we, mm -hmm. we connect the left port to the left gigabit switch and the right port through the right to the right gigabit switch. And uh, bear with me, um, when you follow the line, it's going behind the node so that I, I don't have in, uh, so many crosses over the, over the picture, right? <laughs> so now we have everything for our one gigabit uh, connections. And now we have some fun with our high performance NICs. We have two 25 gigabit NICs that, that are used for the VM switch. The right one, we uh, connect to the right 100 gigabit switch. Mm -hmm. And you, you could say uh, you have one, 100 gigabit ports in the switches, but it's only a 25 gigabit NIC. That's not the same. One is SFP28 and the other, the other is QSFP28. So there are cables available where you on one side have a 100 gig port and on the, on the other side you have four 25 gigabit ports. And I use those cables here. Mm -hmm. So then we connect the other port to the left switch, same. And now we connect our 100 gigabit ports from our storage switch. The right one again to the right switch and the left one again to the left switch. Mm -hmm. So this is the cabling and it's a bit confused because I go behind the switch with the cable to the first port. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Otherwise, good. otherwise, we don't have enough uh, space. We so are not the drawing experts, at, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now let's look at four nodes. Yeah, but first of all, um, it's maybe worth mentioning to do uh, some adapter teaming, or that's what we did, right, in our yeah. setup. So just yeah, to make I, sure that the virtual adapters right which you have on top there are sort of pinned to the physical nic port yeah. so uh, uh, all the one adapters so class one REPL one smb one are bound to the left 100 gig port mm -hmm. we talked about that in the videos before and we also did right. the uh, team adapter uh, mapping yeah but it's mm -hmm. important yeah. that uh, we we uh, we that our traffic, our high performance traffic, stays in the switch. So every yeah. node on in the side is connected to that switch, and it doesn't go over to the other switch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's now okay. let's now go to a, a bit more complex. Yeah. In the picture, next slide. Okay. Yes. The next one. So now uh, we look at the same switches um, and we have four nodes. And mm -hmm. to be honest here, this is not our preferred network setup. We will go to that in the next slide, but I don't I only have those switches. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have four Mellanox switches and four Ubiquiti switches for this setup. But in a real stretch scenario, we will put 
multiple switches in one side. Unfortunately, my uh, CFO doesn't uh, doesn't give me enough money to buy four Mellanox switches to to do this video. So we have to we have to do it with the switches we have. And I have seen these scenarios also out uh, at customers, but I I would not. I don't okay, prefer before, this before before you talk about why not, maybe you should yeah. explain first what we have, right? Because okay, okay, what do I, we have? I think we 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 uh, it, the message is clear. We have budget constraints, right? Um, yes, exactly. And that's why we did it this way, right? Okay. So okay, let's let me. Do animate. you want to do you want to draw some lines here? Because this picture doesn't have uh, too much lines. Some are here, so our. Our ubiquity uh, network is connected to a firewall, and over yeah. that firewall we can uh, we can reach uh, Azure because mm -hmm. we have an Azure Stack HCI cluster. It has to uh, uh, occasionally it has to communicate with Azure. So mm -hmm. our ubiquity switches, of course, are connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. cross connected. Then okay. our and Mellanox switches are switches are also cross connected. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because our VM adapters, where our virtual machines are connecting over, these VM adapters are connected to the Mellanox switches, and we want we want the possibility that our VMs can communicate to our okay. clients. That clients are usually connected to the one gigabit network in this example, okay. and maybe want to go to the internet. So we have also to connect our Mellanox switches to the ubiquity switches. Okay, yeah, so let um, me just. But that so that means a virtual machine on node number one should be able to talk to a virtual machine that is sitting on node number four, um, and therefore we need the red. Yeah, this is possible with the right. interconnect, right, Bernard? Right. But if they want to communicate, if you want to communicate from your notebook with mm -hmm. this virtual machine, you can't do mm -hmm. that because you are coming over the internet. Maybe uh, yeah. in our AVD series, we did that. You connected mm -hmm. to a virtual desktop on my uh, on my hosts here and for that we need these blue lines right so yeah. our melanox switches Correct. have to be connected to the ubiquity switches and these are connected to the internet right 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 okay so um mm -hmm. we, but we will, have a, yeah? yeah so let me draw some lines so these were the green ones right so we have explained all of the stuff but you know i am you know maybe it's good f to do some drawing stuff to show a little bit the complexity or how yes. complex it can get um so let me you know try to do some lines here so you would you know on node number one i would take the storage and set it to this one right um right. and for the redundancy reasons or let's maybe draw first the nodes on one side so i take do the same for the other node right yeah. then on the other side i use that switch here right let's do it and then what about the additional adapters um you have here the second port for the storage would you do it yeah. on the left hand side switch or on the other one so if we put it in the left hand, in the left switch that is in the side, if we have only two switches uh, mm -hmm. and you have to update the switch or the switch mm -hmm. nowadays is like a computer, right? It has so a lot of software idea. on it. And okay. maybe there is something like a blue screen. Yeah, I call okay. it black screen because it doesn't have a monitor attached to it. Uh, or mm -hmm. you have to update the switch. All the communication in that side, uh, at least what's connected to that switch, wouldn't be possible so we need some redundancy okay. and in this scenario you would connect uh, this adapter to the other side right okay yeah i got it um and i agree on this one so let's do it the same way for the other one as well right so yeah. let's draw it there and let's do the stuff for the other nodes as well which is going that direction here and yes. one more time yeah. okay got it Okay, yeah. but these are the now, blue ones. Yeah, the blue ones are yeah. connected from one side to another. You can do that if you mm -hmm. buy uh, um, fiber GBIX, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and use a long fiber cable between the sides. So on a campus cluster where we maybe have 50 meters, 100 mm -hmm. meters, 200 meters between the sides, you can do that. But this mm -hmm. is not the whole truth here. 
we also had have to do it for the green ones so for the yeah. vm adapters there's another oh, okay. vm adapter and uh, the vm should also be redundantly connected so we would get another four cables uh, that mm -hmm. are interconnected between the sides don't well, get me I... wrong i've seen <laughs> these scenarios at customers yeah. they work but mm -hmm. it's not my preferred way i understand if a customer gets a phone node cluster he, he maybe wants not to buy four high performance switches because they're also expensive, mm -hmm. but they have to do a lot of uh, fiber connections between the sides and it's it's getting very complex. So if you would mm -hmm. uh, put every line here from the four nodes, it's it's a mess, right? Yeah, and I'm not you doing it. I mean, I get the <laughs> point, right? Um, yeah. um, and, you know, it's not an ideal setup, right? Because you may earn or get some inconsistencies in uh, in the latencies, right? So the reddish yeah. lines might be fast, whereas the blue lines are, you know, lagging a little bit behind. Might not be much, but you're adding some asymmetry to uh, to yeah. that system. Right? Okay. And the 100 gigabits, uh, GBIX could be getting expensive. So on uh, in the end, you have really to calculate if it's cheaper to okay. uh, do these cables with the expensive GBIX mm -hmm. or buy another two switches and uh, uh, and use duck cables that, that are directly connected to the switches. Okay. Um, so uh, mm. I, why are customers doing that? Let me add a, yeah. one additional word. This is the right design if all the nodes are in the same site. Mm -hmm. You need two switches for the high for for the storage here, and two switches for management. That that's okay. But mm -hmm. if we stretch it over sides, yeah, and mm -hmm. if we go to a metro cluster that is tens, twenties, hundreds kilometer apart, we 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 should not do that because we don't have the 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 many cables uh, or may, many connections between the sides. Then we should have multiple switches, and I prefer that on the campus also. So we have another picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe okay. Bernard to show it how you should do it, but unfortunately we don't have the budget here, and we don't <laughs> want to uh, to lie to you that we have that we don't have that. But this is the design we would like to have, and if you could add the SMB adapters, maybe uh, draw them. Yeah, mm -hmm. first okay. let's do all the. There is more. We have more connections here, so do more. Yeah, and there are two more. I get. I think. Yeah, we have to connect also our switches. Ah, go back to um, to our one gigabit infrastructure because the VMs are still on the switches down there, right? So now, mm -hmm. Bernard, if you now connect only the high performance storage uh, NICs, the two are in, mm -hmm. on each side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would I would do it that way, right? So let me yeah. also take now the blue maybe for the second port, and I would go. This one should go here, and that yes. one is going there, or yes. you know, sort of. Uh, this one goes there, and that one goes here. Yes. Right. Sort of. Right. Um. I mean, you may have chosen different colors for the different paths, but you know. And so yeah. that would be the redundancy. So this, is, this is a way we could do it. And now mm. the connections are only in the side and mm. the long cables are only the, the four red ones between the switches. And this is only one yeah. way how you can do it. You can, you can also use only one cable between the two switches mm -hmm. because we have redundancy over the other, uh, uh, other two switches. So in this scenario, we would, we would have 400 gigabytes bit between the sides, maybe 200 are enough. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. And here, of course, if you build something like that, it's a bit complex. You need someone who is re really knowledgeable on the switches because we mm -hmm. have to configure. This is like we have circles here. So mm -hmm. uh, and in Ethernet, you can't have uh, loops, say loops, not circles, yeah. loops. So you have also to configure something that you don't have loops like a, spanning tree or fast spanning tree and so on. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um so yeah, okay. I think we, you know, we spent a really a good good time and I think it's good for understanding. But now let's maybe talk a little bit about the reddish lines, right? Because we have, you know, traffic passing from left to right. Um so that means we need to do some routing. Um we talked in the previous video about the routing on the on the operating system level, but now maybe let's you know 
consider the routing um, or let's see how the routing looks like on the switching level, right? On the Mellanox ones. And I think it's your turn to show the menu of the Mellanox switch yeah. you're used for showing a, okay. a, an example of the routing. Yeah. So I switch over to my screen and uh, we, uh, we have a red outline over the two cluster networks and the replica mm -hmm. nets networks because those are routed over the Mellanox switches. So we will look at a Mellanox switch. Mm -hmm. The SMB adapters are also connected to the Mellanox switch, but they are not routed. Yeah? Right. And the management, uh, we have here our ubiquity. The management network is connected to the one gigabit uh, uh, switches, the, the ubiquity switches. Uh, and we will not look at that because there we use a default gateway. So I will, I have prepared a web console of one of my uh, Mellanox. Uh, now it's NVIDIA, it's an NVIDIA switch. Uh, Mellanox was bought by NVIDIA. And here you see the, the switch with the ports. Here are 100 gigabit ports, they are fully green. And here you see a, a port that has two two green ones, so it's uh, two 50 gigabit ports. So one, one 100 gigabit port is divided into 50. And here we have 425 ports in one, one 100 gigabit. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we go here to IP routes and we look at IP route. And mm -hmm. we see here that the switch itself has multiple routes. It has a default route that is when we want to connect to the switch uh, and the switch is also in a kind of management network where where i i work over this ip address with the console yeah that's not important um, but here we see additional networks and if you look here i i still have part of the slide here so if we look at the cluster one network the uh, 100 192 168 one 111 we find it here here's a 111 and if if i move it a little bit to the side we see here 111 is in vlan 821 and that's the same here mm -hmm. so and all the other um other networks are also here 113 is here 107 is here, 109 is here. And if we would move over, we have the other networks also presented here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you do that with the Mellanox switch? And it's the same, for example, um, Bernard has, has Lenovo switches. You do it the same way, right? When you use your switches for routing, you configure uh, in the VLAN. So here I press on the VLAN. In the VLAN, we give the switch an IP address in the IP range that is represented by this VLAN. So in our case, it's uh, the 111. And I gave it, in my scenario, the first address, so the dot one. And the switch then can route from 111 um, to other networks that are known on the switch. And we have multiple. We only use on our hosts, we implemented a network route that we say from the host from 192, 168, 111, we want to route to 110 because that is the other cluster network. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the switch could also route between now the different, the other networks because it has a routing table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could also route from 111 to 17, but we, so we the don't specific, need that. Yeah. yeah. So the specific VLAN. Uh, gets an adapter or an IP address, or is made like an interface, and then yeah. you tell it uh, which IP. Yeah. And then we can have. route here, but on the host itself, we set the host. So if you want, if if a host is on the odd side, if you mm -hmm. want to reach the 110 net, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we said okay. If you want to reach the 110 net, use the default gateway 111.1, and it knows how it gets to 110. Yeah. So um, yeah, this uh, this is our hardware part, or oh, um, Bernard. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so um, this is yeah. This was about the switches, and now I think we in the next videos we'll we'll concentrate on creating uh, the cluster. Yeah, we will after. do. See you there. See you there.